I'm excited to see my buddy William Flanagan. It's been a long day already, so I got my bang. We're just gonna have a little fun in the William Flanagan show. You're on WSAR, 1480 AM, 95.9 FM, WSAR.com, and Facebook Live with the Fanigans. My guest is Tom DiNucci. We're talking Hollywood. been involved in so many great movies, The Vault, um, just coming off the set of acting in a movie, directing movies. But one of the movies that's getting a lot of buzz, and we don't even have a release date yet, I think, for it, stars Megan Fox, an A-list actress. Uh, she's on all of the social media sites. People are talking about her. Um, tell us what you can about the movie. Well, Johnny and Clyde is a very unique film, co-wrote with Nick Principe and directed, uh, produced by Chad Verdi and Verdi Productions. Uh, and this is a movie that we shot right in Providence, Rhode Island, and I, I really think it has a little bit of everything, and people are going to be surprised that it also has an element of comedy in there as well, and there's some, some very funny parts, although it is very dark at times, too, and it's got, you know, a lot of the... Uh, kind of action-packed scenes that people are going to be looking for in that type of genre. When you can make kind of like a, what I like to call almost like a genre bender, uh, where you get to use kind of sprinkle in ingredients from various different types of movies and kind of make it this nice kind of uh, jambalaya of excitement. I, I think that that's really what we have uh, for people with Johnny and Clyde, and, and we can't wait to put that one out there. And how was it working with Megan? One of my favorite parts about making films is collaborating with other artists. You know, you, you write a scene and you envision it one way, but then a really great actor might read it and say something just a little different or add their own little piece of nuance to it. And it's like this kind of like light bulb moment where you're like, oh my God, that's, that's, that's perfect. Um, so that's my favorite part, you know, taking a good idea and seeing someone else make it great. Uh, and I think Megan did that a lot in this movie, and she was just terrific to work with. I typically know you to have long dark hair. Today, you got that Billy Idol look, you got the blonde hair, you look like you just walked off a, a rock tour. I know it has to do with the role you just completed. Tell us about the Christmas movie. Well, I just had an absolute blast uh, working on a movie called Merry X Mass, which we shot in Rhode Island. That one was produced by Chad Verdi Jr. and Paul Luba and was directed by Jacob Cooney. And we just had a tremendous time. I, I got to share the screen with Vanessa Angel. So it was fun to work with her. Um, and it's just a very lighthearted romantic comedy uh, about a group of random folks that get stranded at a hotel due to a big snowstorm on Christmas. So they have to kind of spend Christmas together. All these different personalities. Bunch of random folks. Right. And I play a British rocker by the name of Thurston. And I, I speak like this quite a bit. How do you become British? You know, I got lucky because I actually, I've been working on the Kelly Maloney film a lot, you yes. know, which... You know, I started working on this documentary a long time ago, which uh, it, it's it's kind of cool because everyone in the documentary, for the most part, has a British accent. So I'd be in the editing room just like listening to the accent for months and months and months when we were editing the documentary. Mm -hmm. So I just and heard it. People don't know Kelly was the promoter for heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis, who was British. So I kind of learned the accent through osmosis, really. It was just by listening to it a lot. Um, and that's kind of how I've always been. Like, if I hear something, I can, I'm a mimic. I've always done impressions of people. And a lot of times, it's out of a place of love. Like, I'm not making fun of you if I, if I do a, a, an impression of you. It usually means I like you a lot. I kind of have an impression for almost every person that I meet. Uh, so I kind of pull into that little bag of tricks when I got to do a voice in a movie. So that's kind of where that came from. This made me feel like I did an all right job with the accent. Okay. By the end of the show... The entire crew was speaking in a British accent. That's great. So I had everybody like, all right, mate, let's go. It's the next take. What scene are we on now? Like, everyone was doing it. It, it became like, it was contagious. Government plays a role now in movie making, too. Tax credits. What makes, why would somebody want to shoot in Rhode Island or in Massachusetts to California and New York? 
Don't Look Up, a big portion of that was shot here in Fall River, starring uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Meryl Streep. How big of a role does government play in deciding where to shoot a movie? Every time we make a movie, you've got a group of at least, you know, a hundred people when you figure the crew and the cast and everything. You've got a hundred people that wouldn't normally be in that spot for an extended period of time, sometimes months, going to coffee, getting lunch, going to dinner, buying their incidentals at whatever local shops may be nearby, staying in hotels, uh, utilizing our transportation, renting cars, you know, basically stoking business quite a bit so you know I, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me and frankly that's not kind of my my neck of the woods in right. terms of business i'm a writer director i'm a creative guy but i know for a fact that when when we make movies our own crew people are, are pumping quite a bit of money back into the local economy because we're going to use local vendors right. you know we're going to use every, everything we can and put as many dollars back in our local people's pockets People are still excited about movies around here. You know, you go to L.A. to shoot a movie. I remember I, sh I directed one movie in L.A., and I remember the second we were outside, the neighbors literally come out with the lawnmower, and they start mowing the lawn. And it's like this known thing. Yeah, you got to grease them. Then you go, you give them 100 bucks, and you say, like, hey, we're going we're gonna to shoot for, like, another hour. You give them a little money, and he puts the mower back away. You're listening to The Wolf Lanigan Show. We'll be right back after these words.